Radio Dunedin <laughs> is a new documentary. It's a documentary film. It tells the story of New Zealand's longest running radio station. The volunteer announces who launched it. Have a guess. Have Just have a guess when Radio Dunedin was launched and how long it's been going. It was launched, when in fact, um, in, in fact, it was launched in 19... 19- 22. Grant Finlay is the director of uh, Radio Dunedin, the documentary. He joins me now. How are you, Grant? Yeah, very good. How are you? So, 1922. Yeah, yeah, it's a long time. 95 years this year. In October, it'll be 95 years. And what, was it sort of like an access radio type of thing, was it? I mean, it um, was, yeah. The, the history is sort of, it started by a group of passionate radio enthusiasts back mm-hmm. in 1922. And during that time, it was. Basically, it started with the Otago University here who started figuring out all the radio signals around the city. Yeah. So it was sort of a perfect storm of that combined with these, this groundswell of passionate radio enthusiasts to, to get this all together in 1922. And was it like owned by the... Because, you know, because radio, the broadcasting, was basically state-controlled for many, many years. So how did it fit into that? Well, this was way, way prior to that. So that was all during the about the 40s. Uh, the government was effectively buying up all the radio stations within New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And this, 4XD as it was called in those days, sailed under the radar because it was effectively a club well no it was too small but it was operating as a club and it wasn't advertising and that's the key wow because if you're advertising the government was said no this is a threat we're going to buy you up and yeah so because they they were still acting as a club during that time the government tried to shut them down but they sort of sailed under under the radar a little bit what a great story yeah so how did you sort of get involved in this well i moved down to dunedin two and a half years ago and almost instantly, I, I saw the station Radio Dunedin because it was literally down the hall from us at MediaWorks. And I, I worked there as a cameraman uh, during the day here. So I just saw this amazing station with so much history and, you know, awesome local characters who all have their own little story to tell. So I just thought, you know, hey, give it a go. We'll, we'll get some of this on tape and, and see what happens. Hey, and what sort of stuff does it do? I mean, you know, is, was it a music station or was it, uh, you know... It's a bit of everything. They say the, the slogan is good talk, good music, and you've got... It's, it's like a real community station. You've still got your pet lines, your buy, sell and swap, you know, stuff that you don't get with the, you know, the network shows anymore. It's, it's a true community station. Are oh, you trying to kill my show here, are you? Good on you. Thanks, thanks for that, Grant. No, no I mean, but you can, only, you can only get this in Dunedin, so I think you're, you're safe. And, and but you said characters. I mean, there's some there's some interesting people amongst all of those. Yeah, yeah. You've got the you know the icons like Neil Collins, who's been around forever, and he's you know done the the Miss Universe pageants and all that sort of stuff. He's he's done so many. Not great as a contestant. No, 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 not, not as a contestant. Um, yeah, so you, you've got Neil Collins, um, Colin Lehman, who was a big name, uh, who passed away. Yeah, quite a few icons, but also pretty much the man on the street can turn up and and do their show at night here. So it was, like I said at the start, like almost the original access radio. I mean, yeah. Which, is, which was a concept that took them, you know, sort of another sort of six decades to sort of get their heads around. They yeah. were doing it in Dunedin before anyone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a few other stations that started up around that time. Like there's one in Gisborne who, who started up as well around that time. But they all died off during the, the 40s and stuff, whereas Radio Dunedin kept on going. Why do you think it survived? I think at its heart is the passionate volunteer base. So you've got these guys who just keep on fighting for the station. You know, they've been through so much. Um, we've had arson attempts where... Uh, this, this young kid back in the 80s um, tried to, to burn... Well, he did, actually. He burnt down the High Cliff transmitter because when 4XD flicked on their signal at night, it blasted out the Christchurch signal that he was listening to. So he, he sent in a few threatening letters and, and then it got too much for him. So he went up there with his school papers and, and burnt the place down. So, Jeez. yeah, a lot of history. You see, you, you say that sort of the people there, but see, you, there must have been turnovers. So from 1922, it's not that, you know, no-one's been yeah. there all the way through. Yeah. So there kept having to be more like-minded people coming in and getting that sort of churn. Is that what they call it these days? Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's sort of... 
I don't know what it is. Like, and that's the, I've asked a few people who have been involved. Like, there's one guy, Brian Lemin, who's been there for 50 years continuous as a volunteer. Yeah. And I asked him straight up, I was like, what's in it for you? And being a, a classic Southern man, he said, oh, I just enjoy it. Yeah. Like, what? Well, surely there's, there's more to it. You know, it's like he just enjoys it. He just turns up every week and does his show. Hey, um, the other thing too is, I mean, I, I was going to say, what's in it for you? You've got a day job. You and Dave Gooselink are around this region, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. Covering everything, yep. covering everything for us. We do Otago Southland area, yeah. So so you're doing this in your own time as well as your day job. You're shooting yeah. this thing. How, long, how much time have you put into it so oh, far? Oh, a lot of time, yeah. It's taken two and a half years to, to do. And it's, um, it's really just like the, like the station. It's a labour of love for me, you know. I, I'm just passionate about the, the topic and I thought... Yeah, let's give it a go. And probably I'm a bit of, bit of a workaholic as well. How can people see it? Well, it's on tonight. The premiere is tonight at the Rialto Cinemas. And at that, at, that's at 8 p.m. Sorry, yeah. What, around the country or just no, here? No, just in Dunedin. Dunedin at this stage, yeah. You want to get this, you want to need to get this around the rest I of the media tour. I do, yeah. So we'll start off with Dunedin and uh, then go from there. Hopefully we can get it in some other centres, yeah. How do you fund doing something like this? Well, a lot of it's just been self-funded, really. Um, so it really is a labour of love, yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. Recently, the DCC have come on board to help pay for the music, so that's been a, a great help. So, yeah, that, that, was, that was the main cost, because I really wanted to reflect the music of the station as much as I could. So, yeah, that was, that was a big cost. But 1922, I mean, uh, it's funny, isn't it? When you think about it, it probably could only happen here, couldn't it? Yeah, I guess so. It's it's one of those places, Dunedin, where it is a really com- real community sort of driven place. So I think people just want to speak to other locals and and just connect with their community down here, whereas Auckland sort of seems a bit more kind of not connected as much. So you've just like, seen this. You saw this thing up and started make, asking questions yourself and that got you that got you hooked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Are you happy with it? I am, yeah. I yeah. mean, you can't say you're not, but, but yeah, you know what some, I mean? Some days, because I've, I've lived and breathed it for so many years, two years now, uh, some days I just can't stand the sight of it because I've seen it, you know, so many times. But uh, I know, because I, I look, I've, over the years I've done a couple of docos and the yeah. things that always, you know, you're quite right, and no matter how invested in it you are, yeah, because it's so intense and looking things yeah. over and over and yeah. over and over, and anyway, you're sick to death of it. But yeah. there's still the love there for you, though. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. And I've had a lot of great help from uh, some good friends, Ryan Ingalls and Sarah Rowan, to to put it together as well. I would have never been able to do it without those guys. Hey, well, listen, thanks for coming and thanks for coming and yakking to us. We look forward to uh, it moving around the rest of, around the rest of the country. Um, Radio Dunedin. And uh, as 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 we heard, as we heard since not, started in 1922, and as much when the governments came in and gobbled up all the stations and set up the state network and all that kind of nonsense, this one just sailed. And I love that. <laughs> I just love the idea that it sailed under the radar, yeah. Grant. Yeah. Grant Finlay is the director of Radio Dunedin. Look out for it. It is uh, premiering here in Dunedin tonight. But hopefully, going to see it. What about a broad- get it, getting it broadcast? You, you've got friends in the business. Yeah, I am the talking pull a few to strings. TV3, uh, but we'll, we'll get the theatre. Release out of the way first, and then we'll see what a future it'll have. Yeah, good on you. Thank you so much, Grant.